2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So, is everyone able to see my screen? Yes? Okay, fine. So, one minute. So yesterday we had discussed about input splits and blocks until to this slide, right? So today we will try to understand much more about mapper and reducer and along with that we will try to execute one simple map reduce program as well and discuss about how we are going to write that program and uh, how we can execute that as well, okay? So, if you come to this slide, it talks about much about mapper. So, the mapper may use or completely ignore the input key. So, sometimes in and in some cases, mapper class will read the inputs in the form of key value pairs, but at the same time, it may use or may not use that key. So it uses that key as just a reference, but after the uh, actual processing starts and maybe with the reducer, the output may contain the value that mapper has read as a key or the key of my reducer might be different as well. So that is what it says. So let's see an example for that. Okay. For example, a standard pattern is to read a line of a file at a time. The key is the byte offset into the file at which the line starts and the value is the content of the line itself. So let's see a case. So suppose the okay, input file as input.txt. Okay. In this file, let's take that I have a data as Okay, so let's imagine that this is the content of my input.txt file. So the default way or one of the way to read this input.txt file into my mapper is it will take the key value as the offset itself. So the byte of offset itself will be the key value. So for the first line the key would be generated as And now, so just imagine that how many bytes it is taking. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
10. So totally it has 14 characters, right? So the next one, in the sense, the next record will be read from 15th position. And the value will be Big data session. Okay, so it might be somewhere around 45 position or something. And in the sense, we the V word is starting at 45 position. So that is what it reads. Maybe this is about 62 position or something. And the value itself is the content of that line. So this is how the mapper actually reads all your input file. So now this will become a split for your map. And again this will be another split. So as we discussed each split is an input to each of the map right. So I have here four splits and due to that reason I will get decided internally that I have to run four maps parallelly such that the whole file can be processed at a single shot. Okay. So the value is the contents of the line itself. Typically the key is considered irrelevant. Suppose if you take this example, uh, will I use this 0, 15, 45 and 62 anywhere after my map phase is finished? It is just a reference such that I can read my input file, right? So, but I'm not going to use these values or I'm not going to process these values and keep it somewhere in my output program. So, if you take that, count how many words are there in my input file. word so if this was my question my output would be in the form of and so on right so is there anywhere that I am using this 0, 15, 45, 62 in my output? No, right? My requirement is I need to get the count of each word. That's it. I don't need these references or anywhere. So that is the reason I am saying that typically the key is considered irrelevant. So I don't need this key except for reference. And if the mapper writes anything out, the output must be in the form of key value pairs. So as we see, the mapper whatever it gives you it will generate actually high comma one how comma one you comma one and maybe after the reducer is maybe after the reducer phase is finished I may get as high comma three how comma four if at all the count is three and four respectively for high and how right so this is how the mapper phase executes and let's see a few sample mapper algorithms such that we can understand much more about how mapper processing will be done. So this one, this mapper case is about converting the case of my text to upper. So, so I have an input such that it it is mapped to my mapper as key and value and I had given an algorithm stating emit k dot to upper comma v dot to upper so my key value has to be sent to uppercase and again my value has also to be 
sent to uppercase. So if my input file contains foo comma bar in to my map phase as input key value pairs, the output from my map phase would be something like caps lock of few and caps of bar, right? So same thing like for other examples also. If I give as foo, foo comma other, the caps version of the key value pair is generated. So I'm just trying to show you few examples of my mapper key value. So let's see this one. It is trying to do as for each character v in value emit key comma character right so for each of the character that was there in my key values it is generating that I need the key as a whole and the characters of each of the value so again if you take the same example of foo comma bar I would generate the output as the key itself and for each character in v so what are the different characters we have in this value is b a and r so it is emitting as key comma character of my first value and character of my second character of my value and third character of my value so the same thing is with other as well so it is up to me like how I want to write my logic in my mapper class such that I can process my keys and values see it is telling like again I am trying to do a prime test for this so let my map is having a value of key comma value k comma b and I am writing an algorithm as if e is prime of v then emit k comma v so if at all my value is a prime number then only I am emitting my key comma value or else if I take this digit 10 as my input as it is not a prime number it's not going to generate anything right so if we see this case we can think like there might be cases there might be some cases such that I will not emit anything through my mapper class also so depending on my condition I may emit key values from my map as an output in the sense as intermediate output or sometimes I may not generate my intermediate data also And let's see the last one, I think. The key output of the mapper does not need to be identical to the input key. So again, almost in almost all the cases, the keys and values that were generated by the mapper class will not be equal to the key and values which were input to my mapper class. As I am doing some processing in my mapper class, it's not mandatory that it has to be same with my keys and values of my input of my map phase. So here I'm trying to emit v dot length of comma value. So I'm trying to get the length of my key as a key value from my mapper output. So if you take these examples foo comma bar the foo itself is having a three character so it is emitting the length of v comma value so the bar is having three characters and that's the reason I'm having three as my key and if you take other other I'm having the value as phi so I will generate the key comma value as phi comma other so that is how I write my algorithms let's see something about the reducer as well after the mapper phase is over, all the intermediate values for a given intermediate key are combined together into a list. This list is given to a reducer, right? So there will be something shuffle and sort happens in between mapper and reducer and all the combinations or whatever the intermediate aggregations that all can happen will be done over that phase and the final list will be given to reducer to do a final aggregation so there may be a single reducer or multiple reducers so let's see this case uh, okay so yesterday we had seen our cards example right in my cards example I have divided everything into my input splits so from now today we will discuss 
this as 64 MB as input splits only, but not my HDFS block. Okay, so I am sending each of my input split to my mapper phase and the shuffle and short is happening and finally there is one reducer which is generating the final output. So suppose I have a case like I am having one more reducer and let's rename it to reducer 1 ok and now I want the output as send all club comma spade to reducer 1 and diamond comma what is the other one heart right heart to reducer 2 Okay, so this is what my requirement is. I have two reducers with me right now and I want separately in two different files with club comma spade in one file and diamond comma heart in another file. Now what I have to do is, if you remember there is one more concept called or which we discussed in the beginning called as, can anyone tell me? We heard that name in our class. Can anyone guess it? Guys, can anyone guess it? Think of it for a while. Meanwhile, I draw it. Okay. No, Akshay. Uh, that has a different purpose. I will explain you. Guys, can anyone try? Akshay had given me a answer. Uh, Nisha, there is a shuffle phase. I agree with you. But before shuffling happens, I have to decide like how can I send club comma spade to reducer 1 and how can I decide that diamond comma heart goes to reducer 2. Right? There is shuffle phase. That is true. But how this shuffle will happen? On what basis I can do or on what basis I can write my program? Simply, I cannot say like I mean there is something called inbuilt uh, procedure shuffle and sort such that it will uh, shuffle according my wish so I have to quote something right uh, Rahul locality is the one see data locality means uh, which is a concept uh, that happens internally so suppose if you want to run your map task on a machine where your data resides that is called as locality. I mean you will try your best such that your map and data will be at a single place. That's it. But my requirement here is club and spade should be on one output file and diamond and heart should be on another output file. It's not about the locality, right? So can I think like the guesses are done? Okay, super. 
anyways let me tell you so there is a concept called as partitioner do you remember we discussed this right i mean at least we heard this name what partitioner is right Okay, so partitioner is a guy who will decide like which key should go to which reducer. So all my mapper outputs are sent to my partitioner, and now my partitioner is the guy deciding that okay, my mapper is emitting outputs as club hearts pay diamond comma one 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 one. The programmer is expecting the output to be club and heart to be into reducer one. so partitioner will do or it will send so there is something or there should be some logic after this shuffle and sort phase the partitioner has to decide that okay club comma spade should go to reducer one so all the outputs of club comma spade so if i repeat this again and so on guys okay another again here also you will get one more okay this is how it happens so partitioner will see the outputs of each mapper and it will you know segregate those clubs comma spades into one reducer and diamond comma heart into another reducer so there is an inbuilt logic called as hash partitioner which is a default partitioner in our framework where it will decide like which reducer it should take for a particular kind of key okay we will discuss much more about hash partitioner logic and how it will decide that okay uh, depending on what values on one on what rules it is going to move into which reducer but for right now just we will know about partitioner is a guy who will decide that which reducer needs to be process which kind of keys only those keys will be sent to that particular reducer and all the remaining keys will be sent to another reducer okay so there may be a single reducer or multiple reducers this is specified as part of our job configuration so whenever we write our mapper phases and main phase and reducer phases in our code we will specify like how many reducers that we are going to use so if we don't do anything in my reducer it will take the default as value 1 or 0 i mean it can take the default value as 0 if at all if you specify it it will take as per that in the sense it is going to override the configuration that is given by admin through my program all values associated with a particular intermediate key are guaranteed to go to the same reducer 
the intermediate keys and their values list are passed to the reducer in a sorted key order and this sorting is done by this sorting is done by by shuffle and sort face again it is also it's up to me whether I want to write it or I can use the inbuilt mechanism itself the reducer outputs a zero or more final key value pairs this is an important topic again zero okay let me write it here so if you take this example hi come hi how are you welcome to h2k big data session we are at our map reduce discussion and we are going to execute our first map produce program and if my requirement is like generate an output such that in my input file execute word is repeated four times okay Okay, so but this case is not being satisfied with my input file, right? If I see my whole input file, I have the execute word as only once. So at that time, my reducer will not give any output also. So it all depends on the input condition you are going to give in your program. So if I say as emit it when it occurred only four times, then definitely I will not get it for this particular input dot text file, right? So that what it says. The reducer emits zero or more final key value pairs, and these are written to HDFS. As we discussed, only the output of reducer is written to HDFS back again, but all the intermediate values are written to our local file system, right? So, can anyone guess the reason for having the intermediate values on the local file system, but not? on HDFS this is a very good logical question I think you have to think about it any reason that why, why we are giving this intermediate data on local file system rather than writing into HDFS because we are on Hadoop system um, and yeah go ahead guy hello yeah Are hello yeah yeah um, I, I think I think if the intermediate values are written to HDFS they are going to be split up into blocks and transferred all over into different nodes but you actually need those values locally to give to the reducer no, anyways, the data has to be transferred to all the nodes, right? Because uh, as we discussed in our previous class, I'm not going to draw everything. Just I will draw a few things. I have three tasks running on my three data nodes. So, and everywhere I will have the output, right? So, this is my map output. This is my map output and this is my map output and my job tracker is going to decide where my reducer has to run right so and he if he decides that h2k emphasis provides world class online it training staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide h2k emphasis how we are different from our competitors 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, 
mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.